This is Randy Snow from the World of Football, and today I am in Springville, New York, at the Western New York chapter of the Pro Football Researchers Association. They're having their eighth annual meeting today where folks from several different states have come here to hear some great speakers and uh, show some memorabilia. Just having a great time today. And I'm here talking with John Steffenhagen, who is the great grandson of Leo Lyons. You don't know who Leo <laughs> Lyons is? John, tell us about your great grandfather. Well, I originally didn't know who he was either, other than he was my grandfather, sure. your grandfather. Sure. So we would uh, go back to when I was like five or six years old, be over at his house and uh, play with my Hot Wheel cars. And mm -hmm. my mom was like, oh, keep it down, keep it down. I'm like, why? It's just a couple of old guys here. They're like, no, no, they're important. They're important. So uh, later on, I learned that the two old guys that were walking in the house with the hats and the cigars were George Hallis and Art Rooney. Wow. Who were two of his staunch friends uh, at that time. So growing up, again, didn't think anything of it. I don't know who, so the owner of the Steelers, whatever, okay. <laughs> so um, as time went on, uh, he passed away, and he had left several boxes with relatives, and my mother had several boxes from Leo. So they were full of antiques and things like that, so then I uh, didn't do much with them, and then later on, during high school, I'm like, oh, let me go through these old boxes. And there's these old pictures, again, thinking, it's just old pictures, I don't know who he is. Sure. So I start seeing pictures, and I'm like, that looks like Vince Lombardi. That looks like <laughs> Curly Lambeau. That looks like, I'm like, wait a minute. So then in, back at that time, there wasn't Google. I could just hit, you right. know, it was in the right. 80s. I had to go up on the computer at the library. I start seeing Leo Lyons. Uh, he was there at the league founding, and I'm like, wow. So that just struck me as like, wait a minute, who is this guy? And then the more I would dig, the more I would find, and then... I come find out that he was uh, joined the Rochester Jeffersons, which was a semi-pro football team in Rochester. And at 18, he took over as manager, player, coach, and owner of the team. Okay. And so during those years, they became the New York State champions. And in 1920, uh, he was invited to Canton, Ohio, to form the National Football League. He was one of only 10 owners. That were there represent the NFL at at the famous uh, Ralph Hay meeting at the yes. Hubmobile dealership, yep. uh, where they founded the NFL. Leo Lyons was there to yep. represent his team, the Ralph Rochester Jefferson. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And and so you got your hands on a lot of this uh, memorabilia that he had collected, and thank goodness he did. Yeah. Because describe some of the things that you actually found by going right. this. I know you it's it's a lot. <laughs> But what are some of the highlights of things that you found? In your right. Collection? A lot of the things, again, were just, just look like simple items. But then, for instance, it'd be an old football. You know, it didn't have any markings on it. So I'm like, oh, it's just an old, neat old football. But then I started looking at the logo, and it, it was a W with a box over it. And so I would go on the Internet and start looking and come to find out that that's an original Wilson football, mm. which was extremely rare. So. I'm like, oh, let me dig some more. So we, I would go through the things and find interesting items, which I thought were just his from his football days, sure. you know, not really delving into it. But then the more I would dig, the more I would find, and then I was confused. I'm like, is, is he really this involved with the NFL? And I've never heard of him before. So um, that's when I joined the PFRA, was the join, and I met Jeffrey Miller. And he, used to, uh, he told me, you know, we, can, we got a lot of researchers, uh, Ken Crippen. So they had dug a lot more. And then I was like, oh, my God, he did all this. And it was <laughs> neat. So some of the other things, for instance, a wooden box. Or no, I think go backwards. Um, how I, I had all these items. Then three years ago, I moved into a new house. And I had these old boxes from my mom. So the box were falling apart. So I'm transferring the things into the new bins. And there's a bunch of um, Hall of Fame programs from the 60s, the very first ones. Mm. And of course, 
Leo's in them as I find these pictures. I'm like, what? He's at the coin toss? <laughs> and so out fell a piece of paper. And I'm like, I was like, what is this? So I pick it up. I'm looking at it. And it's this long list. And it's it says inventory list to for Pete Rosell. Hmm. I flip it over and there's an NFL memo from Pete Rosell saying, Leo, could, we need an inventory because we're opening up the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mm. We heard you have a huge extensive collection. Mm. So then I flip it over and I'm reading that football. Oh, that's the 1921. He's using the 21 game against the Bears at Wrigley Field. I'm, mm. I'm like, no, this can't be. So anyways, just the things that I would find were like one of a kind items. And and he had a lot of things were were tagged, or at least there was a note saying you know what it was and where it was used, yeah, and like that. And a, a lot of indirect ways. He he also kept a journal, which he would describe some things here and there. But it would just be like a little sentence or a word, like mm. uh, that football, like the football, for instance. Uh, he would just have a little note about it, and then I had the inventory list. But then it it, it said, um, well, then later on I Googled it, and. I found out that that ball, there was a picture of Leo holding the ball mm. in a 1934 article saying this is the game ball wow. from the Bears, Jefferson's game in 21. Wow. So just a lot of weird things, just little things that I could have easily been thrown away. Mm. But I kept them, and now it's like, oh, my God, I have this. Now, you've brought a lot of uh, memorabilia to, to these gatherings over the years. I've sure. seen quite a bit of it. It's, it's all fascinating. And now you and Jeff Miller are in the process of writing a book about all the memorabilia that you got from Leo. Uh, when is that supposed to be coming out? Any idea? Well, yeah, the book will be about basically Leo's life, 100 years of being involved in the NFL, mm. from being a player, manager, coach, and owner of a team, to the founding of the league, to becoming uh, the historian of the league. In 1960, he was voted by league owners as the historian of the league. Mm. And then... Um, with the items that I have paper documents uh, with him talking to the commissioners of the league about starting Hall of Fame. Thus, when he they open up the Hall of Fame, he's there. And, mm. and so that, so then the book's going to cover his life and all the amazing different things that he did. And that will be coming out at the end of next year okay. that McFarlane published. So on top of the the... Uh, book that you're working on right. you also got to play leo lyons briefly yes. in a in a movie that came out last fall yeah uh how was that playing leo lyons himself that was very interesting uh <laughs> the producer had got a hold of me through uh pfra members from dayton ohio and uh it mentioned that i had a bunch of things from that time period and leo and um yeah so he had contacted me he had me come out to Ohio or Dayton okay. and uh, they were filming the movie and I got to put in my first whistle for the first game. That's what the movie was about. Okay. And um, I got to play Leo and it was very uh, surreal, surreal, but uh, <laughs> it was neat. It was kind of, it made me feel good. So, to... so you have the actual whistle or Leo had the whistle from the very first game that was being portrayed in the movie. Yes, and which is ironic because I had once I had that inventory list, I went back and then I would go through newspapers and try to find anything about a whistle or buy something. I come up across a 1965 article that um, says Leo was sitting next to Frank ne or Al Nesser, Frank Nesser's brother. All right. Al Nesser was going to donate it to the Hall of Fame. Mm. And while they were at the dinner table, you know, they get drinking some pops. And uh, <laughs> it ended up that Leo, being the historian, ended up in possession of the, the whistle. Mm. <laughs> so uh, that's what I have now. But, again, like something like that, I could have just thrown away thinking it was just right. a coach's whistle right. or something. So then um, we also found out later on through scraps of paper that my uncle had, he actually finds a piece of paper that said, uh, Leo, I give you this this thing because it was dated a month later. Okay. And so I I through a lot of papers I found out that it was him, and it is signed with by El Nesser mm. on the thing. But okay. um, just all kinds of so much. 
There's so know, many layers. It goes on and on. Yeah. But it was neat. And then, yeah, getting all the Chris Willis and, you know, he was a big time authority and, and knowing a lot about that history. And he said that's pretty neat. Now, the, the movie premiered in, I think, every NFL city last fall. Yes. As well as Canton and a few other places. And I actually got to see it in Canton. Right. And uh, it was it was very interesting. It was in a historic old theater. So to see yeah, they did something all... ha- going on in 1920 yes. in this old theater was just, it was a perfect setting for that. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you've seen the movie. Yeah, I saw it in Dayton. Oh, you saw it in They're all theater. Okay. They're all theater. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. But now the movie is actually going to be uh, streaming beginning uh, August 1st, as far as we know on uh, Amazon Prime. Yep. So everybody yeah. will be able to see the movie. Yes. And at that time, they'll get to see you playing Leo yeah, Lyon. Yes. And, uh, and the whistle from yes. the first game. Yes. And then I got to worry about getting an Oscar afterwards. <laughs> I'll worry about that next year. Okay. <laughs> now, here in Springville, you brought some memorabilia, as you've been doing for many years. Can we go take a look at some of the things yeah. you brought today? Yeah, love to show it. All right, let's go do that. All right, so, John, this is some of the stuff you brought today. I know you've got tons and tons of stuff. But you brought some of the best stuff today. Let, let's start with these license plates. Right. Tell, tell me about those license plates. Well, the first one, the blue one, uh, finding out through newspapers and documents and contacting New York, uh, I found out that those plates were issued to Leo Lyons in 1967 or 66 by Nelson Rockefeller, New York State Governor, and P. Roselle. Uh, to honor Leo as a historian of the league. Okay. And then that was probably three or four years later, whenever they changed. So that was in the boxes that I had. Again, just thought they were just some old plates he had. But yeah, NFL won. You don't you're right, as you say, that. right? Yeah, and what about this helmet? This helmet was worn by Joseph Barry, who played for the Jeffersons in 1921. That is a 21 helmet. That he wore against the Bears at Wrigley Field. Um, wow. Is it, and we found uh, his name after rubbing a lot of it off. Oh, wow. His name was scraped okay. in. But yep. somebody Barry. had painted over it. Oh, wow. So I had caught the, it looked like a B or something that was over here. And then I didn't want to, but I had to say scraped it off and found <laughs> a berry. Wow. So. I also have his pants that went with it. But that was, again, on the inventory list that Leo had stating that those are from that game. So that's how I learned that. And then I would even find a newspaper article about that Barry had left his stuff with Rochester and went on to play with Canton or whatever. So just a lot of levels of, you know, where it, where it came from. Yeah. And the megaphone? That's just an old megaphone. I did find a... Everything is getting old and cracked, which oh, is the, yeah. wow. the problem. But yeah, there was a Jeff's logo okay. written in, down inside there. Okay. So that'd be either the coaches or the fans cheering. Okay. Now this, this jersey here uh, looks in awfully good shape. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to say that that's an original, but that is not an original. <laughs> yeah. That is a reproduction, but that is their famous logo that they were known for. And um, a big story behind that is that uh, Walter Hagen, the golfer at that time, who became the huge um, golf champion, uh, was friends with Leo. And that's documented in the papers. They were pitchers on opposing baseball teams, Hmm. uh, the pitchers. And he would go to his house often. And when Leo was designing the uniforms in Leo's journal, he mentions Walter Hagen saying, why don't you go with a bright red, the color of blood, because of your <laughs> stupid sport? Because he thought football was stupid. It would never play it. Mm. And Leo was obsessed with football, and he was obsessed with golf. So that was kind of the story where the red came from, because Leo wanted to do black uniforms. Mm. So he went with red. And the name Jefferson's comes from a street where they yes. played? Yep, it's short for Jefferson's. Okay. Uh, the Rochester Jefferson's, yeah, that neighborhood was... 19th Ward of Rochester, New York. Uh, Jefferson Avenue is where all the sandlots played, or okay. fields were along the field. Okay. So they just shortened it to Jeff's. So, okay. Yeah, so they designed the logo. and cool. They were one of the first sandlot teams to have a logo mm. on the by everybody wearing them. A lot of times kids would have their own 
design or right. something similar. Yeah. But the whole team wore them, which was rare across the whole country. That was yeah. Rare. Most everybody they had like plain a leather plain, helmets. Yeah, even in the plain, going into the NFL. Yeah. Plain jersey, maybe just the color. Yes. You know? But to have Jefferson's or Jeff's right on the yeah. front. Yeah. Pretty unique for that time. Yeah. Now you've got this book here, which I'm sure has got a, a ton of stuff in it, but you have it open. <laughs> you have it open to a page where, the, where there's a bunch of uh, football plays in that. Yes. What, what is? What are we looking well, at? Well, in those boxes that I got from my mom, there were hundreds of documents, and so again, back then I'm thinking, oh, it's nothing, Tonawanda. But then I come to find out, I start reading the names on them, and the plays. These are actual plays. From those years, the 1920s. Wow. Uh, I mean, I've got ones against Green Bay with Lambeau at quarterback, and, mm. and saying that throw the ones against Jim Thorpe are like throw to the left of him, don't throw to the right of him, and <laughs> just like cool notes that you would never think of, right. you know. But right. but it's like in these documents, and that a lot of the book we're going to try to put as much as we can, but there's so much. Mm. But yeah, just interesting things like that. Just, just a treasure trove of memorabilia that you brought, and you keep bringing stuff every year, and new stuff, and right. some of the things I've seen multiple times, other times you've seen <laughs> something I've never seen. It's all fantastic. Right. Uh, John, thank you very much thank for you so talking much to for us having today. Me on. Thanks yes. for bringing these things along. Uh, John Steffenhagen, great grandson of Leo Lyons, who was there at the founding of the NFL, uh, a man that uh, hopefully when your book comes out, yes. we will learn a lot more about. A lot more. That'd be great. All right. Thank you. Thanks.